Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Tita Lavinia of Titas of Pageantry and for this episode, we will be talking about Brazil and how they've been faring at the international pageant. So please make sure you stick around and please subscribe to the channel as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly pageant fix. guys, I hope that you're doing well. So for those of you who have asked me um, if I'm doing okay, and for those of you who have sent me well wishes and wishes for recovery, thank you so much for that. Um, what I can say is that I am feeling a lot better these days. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this video started. Um, I thought about doing a content for Brazil because just like Thailand. Brazil is one of my favorite countries when it comes to beauty pageants. Now, a lot of the times they make it into the semifinals, but they haven't actually won crowns, um, at least for Miss Universe, since 1968. So I think it's just fitting to talk about Brazil now because they recently crowned a representative at Miss Universe for the year 2020, uh, who would probably compete not till 2021 because as you know the pandemic is still around us and a lot of the beauty pageants have been pushed back to 2021 so we have to wait and see because at least a couple of months ago uh, there was a screenshot of a letter sent by MUO to the national directors uh, letting them know that they can appoint or hold a pageant as long as they pick a representative before November 1st. And a few nights ago, an online committee was formed in Brazil and uh, they had a show, a very short uh, show that was streamed online uh, just to show the passing of the crown from Julia Horta, Miss Universe Brazil 2019, to another Julia, Julia Gama, um, who is 27 years old and who was also a representative of Brazil for Miss World 2014. Now, Julia Gama did really well at Miss World, so we're not dealing with someone new. We're not dealing with someone who has no idea how pageantry works because... In 2014, Julia Gama actually finished top 11. And another feat for Julia Gama in 2014 was that she was one of the recipients of the Beauty with a Purpose Award alongside Kenya, India, and Guyana. So what is interesting about Julia Gama is that she is a little on the older side. Um, as you know, in Miss Universe, they have lifted the age limit so now we have someone who's 27 she is more experienced um, she seems to have a really good foundation when it comes to social work as with other um, crossovers from Miss World going into Miss Universe and a lot of people are really really into you know her impressive bio. This girl can speak four languages. She can speak Portuguese, of course. She can speak Spanish. She can speak English, which is really very important. And she can also speak Mandarin. So I think that's something really interesting about her. Now, I read in one article that she moved to China shortly after her stint at Miss World to become a representative for one of the major um, cosmetics brand there and a representative for a local spa. So I think that... Um, Julia, although it's still too early to say, I think that Julia Gama, and I have to specify that because the previous winner was also a Julia, I think that she is one of the most well-rounded representatives that Brazil has sent in the past, what, 10, 9 years? So, more on her later on and more on her chances later on. Let's go ahead and take a peek at what Brazil has been all about in the world of pageantry. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's one of the countries that I wait for every year. And this is because usually they make an appearance at the semifinals every year. Now, 
I will be talking about Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss International, and Miss Earth only because I have very little information to pull from with the newer pageants such as Miss Grand or Supranational or even Miss Globe. So going back, um, they've done pretty well at the major beauty pageants. Almost every year you get to see a Brazilian representation at the semifinals. There would be years that they would be absent, let's say, but um, the most that they didn't make an appearance was at Miss Universe for a period of six years and Miss World, which is a lot longer for a period of 10 years with no placements. But in between those years, they also did not send any representatives. So what is happening? Why aren't they winning a lot of these crowns? You see, a lot of the crowns of Miss Brazil or Brazil um, were won in the 60s and the 70s. They have yet to penetrate or they have yet to secure a crown now that we're in the modern times, except of course for Miss Earth. Um, but we also have to understand that Miss Earth is one of the youngest alpha pageants out there. So as early as 1954, they started sending a representative um, at Miss Universe and they got really lucky at their inaugural participation, wherein their 1954 representative finished first runner-up. So... In 1963, they bagged their first Miss Universe crown with Ieda Maria Vargas. And then a few years after that, in 1968, which is a really very interesting year, they won two major crowns. Miss Universe with Marta Vasconcelos and Miss International with Maria de Gloria Carvalho. So... What happened in 1968 is very similar to how we were in 2013 when we had several um, alpha pageant winners in just one year. And then in 1971, they also bagged their first Miss World crown with Lucia Petterly. And um, what is also interesting is that when they forayed into Miss Earth, they also bagged two crowns. One was in 2004 with Priscilla Morales, who we all know as one of the local um, celebrities here in the Philippines, married to a local actor. And in 2009, Larissa Ramos. So you might wonder why aren't they, you know, winning these crowns? So I was able to talk to one of the admins from Brazil. Um, this was at the time of Raisa Santana um, in 2016 when they all went to Manila. And one of the reasons that um, was given to me was that they have a little bit of an issue when it comes to styling. Now, I will agree with this because the Brazilian girls, however striking they are, however beautiful and however fit and toned they are, they always seem to miss the styling mark, especially when they enter into Miss Universe and then they enter into, let's say, the evening gown portion. Now, I don't know if you will agree with me on this, but their styling overall from the pre-pageant activities going into the finals with the evening gowns, um, the evening gown portion, it leans towards the more mature side. Now, I don't know if this is something that was um, discussed in Brazil. I don't know if they have like pageant fans like us who gets to be really intrusive when it comes to styling. But if they have been very consistent at placing since 2011, that issue is also quite consistent. So for Brazilian girls who seem to be super fit, who seem to have sass, who seem to have a lot of attitude and a lot of energy on stage, they get to be weighed down a lot when it comes to styling. A lot of their gowns are um, a little questionable, if I may say. Now, you might think that's pretty shallow, but guys, we are talking about competitions wherein you are scored. So whatever it is, Whatever scores you garner, they add up. And if you don't get to add up your scores and get a higher, um, you know, higher number in the end because of like some deductions because of how you carry the gown or how the gown actually looks like, then it could be a problem. But there definitely is hope for the Brazilians because the new representative now, um, 
she has packaged herself or at least the people around her um, made sure that when she is presented to everyone else in the pageant community that the spotlight is not on her looks but the spotlight is on her credentials now this is very important for img or at least the management with how they choose the miss universe winners because the narrative now focuses on how well a representative can become a spokesperson the same way they chose Ozebini as um, a winner because that has not happened before with the Brazilian girls. When we talk about the Brazilian girls, the narrative would always be, oh, she's someone to look out for because she has the best passarela like Melissa, um, Melissa Gurgel or she's someone to look out for because she has the prettiest face like Martina Brown. So in this case, whenever we would read something about Julia Gama, and again, I say this because this is still pretty early, what I notice is that the packaging or how she is presented to us is that we would get to revel at her credentials, we get to revel at um, her skills first before we delve into her actual styling, which could still improve because right now I feel that she is a little pale. I feel that she isn't in her pageant um, ready body, but I have no doubt that she can work on this because I have a photo. We will flash this later on. Um, this was what she looked like when she was in fighting form in 2014. So the Brazilians this year could actually strike it big because we have someone with a recognizable name, someone with a solid background, and someone who could bank on or capitalize on that characteristic of being an excellent speaker. So if this is the year for Brazil, then I am all for it. I love having countries who have been paying their dues, who actually get to... I don't know, win a crown because I, it's very much like the fairy tale that was fun for the Philippines. Um, remember how we waited for more than 40 years to snag a crown? Then this could actually be Brazil's time. But again, it's too early. A lot of the strong Latin countries are sending really physically beautiful girls, but Miss Brazil now seems to have an edge because now we are talking about how well she speaks and whenever we um, have videos about her it shows how well she conveys her message not just in english but in other languages as well so yes guys i know this is pretty short but i have some things in store for you so please wait for that and yeah if you have opinions about the numerous brazil if you feel like she's going to do really well this year or next year for um, the Miss Universe edition, then please let me know so that we can also check how our girls will fare. So, yes, so, um, if you want to follow me on Laika, please do so. And um, you may also follow my editor. His name is Kian. Um, I'm going to put his link um, in the description box as well. And I want to thank a few people. I want to thank Hypnomad for my really sparkly headband and my partner Tita B from Studio Polka for my ponyo pots here and uh, my purple eyeliner, which you probably can't see. So, yeah. Um, if you also want to be part of the Patreon community and help this channel out, uh, please go ahead and consider that. The link is on the description box as well. So yeah, thank you and good night.